Blessed the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. In peace let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> for peace from high, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy church and for all who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our holy father, Francis Poporom, oh, let us pray to the Lord. For our most reverend Metropolitan William, for a God of Bishop Milan, for the Venerable Presbyter, the Diacon in Christ, and all the clergy and people, oh, let us pray to the Lord. For our government and for all in the service of our country, oh, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, oh, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for the months of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, oh, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we be delivered from all affliction, rest, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. 
commemorate her most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, daughter of Tokos and the Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let's come their souls and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. O oh Lord our God, mighty beyond description, glorious above understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and this holy church of Master, and show us, show us and those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is your glory, honor, worship, now and ever, and forever. Wisdom of be attentive. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your mighty deeds. Blessed are you, O Christ our God. You have shown the fishermen to be. Sending down all 
For you are holy, our God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive, peace be to all, of wisdom be attentive. Let us be attentive. When the day of Pentecost came, it found the apostles gathered in one place. Suddenly from up in the sky there came a noise like a strong driving wind, which was heard all through the house where they were seated. Tongues as a fire appeared, which parted and came to rest on each of them. All were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to express themselves in foreign tongues and make bold proclamation as the Spirit prompted them. Staying in Jerusalem at the time were devout Jews of every nation under heaven. These heard the sound and assembled in a large crowd. They were much confused because each one heard these men speaking his own language. The whole occurrence astonished them. They asked in utter amazement, Are not all of these men who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us hears them in his native tongue? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. We live in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia. Egypt and the regions of Libya around Cyrene. There are even visitors from Rome. All Jews are those who have come over to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs too. Yet each of us hears them speaking in his own tongue about the marvels God has accomplished. Peace be to you, reader, wisdom. Be attentive. By the word of the Lord, the heavens. 
heavens were established by the breath of the Spirit, all their powers. Children of men. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, wisdom, oh, let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Saint John. Let us be attentive on the last and greatest day of the Feast of Booth. Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirst, let him come to me, let him drink who believes in me. Scripture has it, from within him rivers of living water shall flow. Here he was referring to the Spirit whom those that came to believe in him were to receive. There was of course no Spirit as yet since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Some in the crowd who heard these words began to say, this must be the prophet, others were claiming he is the Messiah. But an objection was raised, surely the Messiah is not to come from Galilee, does not scripture say, that the Messiah, being of David's family, is to come from Bethlehem, the village where David lived. In this fashion, uh, the crowd was sharply divided over Jesus. Some of them even wanted to apprehend him. However, no one laid hands on him. When the temple guards came back, the chief priests and Pharisees asked them, Why did you not bring him in? The guards replied, No man ever spoke like that before. The Pharisees retorted, Do not tell us. You too have been taken in. You do not see any of the Sanhedrin believing in him, do you? Or the Pharisees, only this lot that knows nothing about the law, and they are lost anyway. One of their own number, Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus by night, spoke up to say, Since when does our law condemn any man who suffers hearing him and knowing the facts? They taunted him, Do not tell us you are a Galilean too. Look it up. You will not find a prophet coming from Galilee. Jesus spoke to the people once again, I am the light of the world. No follower of mine shall ever walk in darkness. No, he shall possess the light of life. Glory to Jesus Christ. We are celebrating one of the greatest and biggest feasts of the church year, the Pentecost Sunday. And I know and it's my experience that we really 
people love this feast because we have in our hearts this desire for this Holy Spirit. We carry this desire to be filled with this power from above, which we call Holy Spirit. And we know that this presence of the Holy Spirit makes us holy, makes us perfect, makes us able to see beyond the horizon of this world. And even we didn't taste yet many of these gifts of Holy Spirit, in our heart is desire to have these gifts. Even we cannot articulate it correctly. And this is why many times we are searching for ways how to receive this fullness of Holy Spirit. What to do to, to gain this gift from above. Many years ago in my, I think, was second parish, there were a group of people, they told me, well, we are not we are not going to be here on Pentecost Sunday because we are going to city, one city, relatively close by, because there will be this big, some kind of gathering. It was something like charismatic, like activity. And it is something that there will be healing service, there, there will be asking, there will be asking, uh, may Holy Spirit fill hearts of people and many times people receive gifts of Holy Spirit, so we are going there. It was a small group of people, I said, go. And they returned back, and majority of them was on fire. It was great. I could feel Holy Spirit, and it was so powerful. And I said, well, good, good. You know what? It took one week. After then one week, this zeal, this fire, was almost gone. And there were this point in why it is that it didn't last for a long time. I said, well, for sure those prayers, teaching, an atmosphere touches human heart. And, well, you got probably taste of this new zeal in your heart soul, but the problem with this gathering is that they start something and they leave people there, then don't lead them to make different next steps which are necessary to come to the state when we are able to receive a really fullness of Holy Spirit. And, but it fits to this modern time because we want things immediately, instantly, now, in the moment when we recognize this desire in our soul. I want it and I want it immediately. But well, in spiritual life, it doesn't work this way. For sure, if we have this desire and we start, God gives us the beginning this kind of fire and zeal to heart as an encouragement to start this journey through which we purify our heart and mind in that way that it is we are ready to receive fullness of Holy Spirit. If we look at the apostles who received his Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, we have to realize that it was not experience which came suddenly. We have to realize that this experience started many years before. Because they were somehow raised in some kind of understanding of God, existence of God. But then in one point of their life, they heard Christ to tell them, come follow me, come follow me. And these men, as we know, they really 
left everything. Their jobs, their families, their way of life, style of life. They really abandoned everything what was some kind of structure of their life. And they started to follow this strange guy. They saw a lot of miracles. They were sitting at Christ's feet, listening to his teaching. Many times they failed because they were not able to understand him. Many times they realized that, well, their way of thinking is not correct. Remember that Christ said to Peter once, go away, Satan. Just because Peter didn't understand things. Even we have this moment when Christ is almost upset with his apostles. And he says, how long I have to be with you, to, you know, to send you, you know, because they were not understanding things, he was saying. And they, then they came with Christ to, to this way of cross, to this, his passions. It was so much for a majority of them, they left him. Only one stayed on the cross. But they experienced resurrection. They experienced this, that well, who Christ is really. And then they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Can you see that? How God was preparing those men for receiving of this gift during a long time. How he was forming their hearts and minds remove, and, by, and removing everything that doesn't belong there everything from the world, all this attachment, and made them ready and able to receive the Holy Spirit. And in this way, we should expect the same gift for us. One thing is desire, is desire and it is good. But we should not be deceived, uh, deceived by, by thought that it come when I get this idea. It is a process. Process of purification. When we are made worthy jars for this grace, for this gift. And if we study these works, the uh, teachings of these holy teachers of spiritual life, we find in their works confirmation that how it goes. Spiritual life has own order. You cannot expect these biggest gifts if you didn't manage to to God under control, basic, these bodily passions. You cannot have this gift given to the heart which is still a slave of sin or bad habits, sinful habits. You cannot expect to have this gift if your mind is still ruled by thoughts, and, and then after that action which are against gospel it's impossible we have to start this journey to purification and then we will be able to receive that it's difficult to sometimes to grasp this because like, yes it is in our nature that we want immediately good things. 
And sometimes in modern time, we even think that we have right to this, that we have a right for this gift without doing anything in our part. But it doesn't work this way. We have to rethink, restructure our way of thinking. Summer before I went to seminary, the first year, my father, he took me and we went to visit one priest who was at the time old, sick. And, well, I, at the time I didn't know a lot of about him. And it was quite difficult to get to him because uh, communists, they treated him as an enemy of the state. There was always somebody from a secret police guarding the house and, and really watching who is entering in. So it was some kind of like conspiracy needed to get there in correct time and without noticing. He lived in a house, one family was taking care of him, he is on his room. I don't remember a lot from the meeting. I just know that when I enter in, I know that I am meeting holy person. That I am meeting a saint. Don't ask me why, what was the signs of that. I don't know, but I felt this. And everything, how he talked, how he was looking at us, these radiant eyes and this peace in his face, despite pain he experienced because of his sickness. And all these words he said, it was everything somehow very powerful for me. This is impression we stayed with me. Now, in these days, and, well, only days, years, there's a process uh, through which is preparing his beatification. And I hope that very soon he will be elevated on the altar. There was a reason for me to be there. But I think my father, he did it from one reason. He wanted me to have this experience of this meeting of this holy person. And he wanted me to know that this is a result not of some kind of wish, but really hard spiritual work during the whole life of that priest. Because he, when he was really almost teenager, still young, <coughs> he started to attend at 11 years old, like school, which was led by fathers, redemptorists. Then he became monk, a priest. He really heard God's calling, and he followed this calling. And not only that, he was trying to love Christ so much that, that really he was trying to keep commandments. And because of that, a lot of people were touched by his words, by his acting, by his preaching in different ways. This is why communists, when communists came, so they saw in him threat. And they put them to prison when he suffered a lot of. It was his cross. And then when he got out from prison, he, they didn't allow him to serve publicly. He was watched on 
each step and he had to pay attention, not to give them one reason which they would be able to use against him. His life was a life of cross and a lot of suffering. A lot of things were, they were taken from him, even this his love for liturgy, which he couldn't serve publicly. But despite of that, a very huge crowd of young men were formed through him. And they entered to monastic life in secrecy, underground. Many priests were afflicted by him and you can still feel this his influence in the life of many. He was filled with Holy Spirit. But it happened because he started to follow Christ with his whole heart. He nonstop was fighting with his passions. He carried his cross as a hero without complaining. And all those things, day by day by day, formed his life and his soul in this way that he became a very good jar to which God put his gift, his own Holy Spirit. Today, when we celebrate this feast and probably we pray and we ask Holy Spirit to enter to our life, let's know that God wants us to give us this gift. He wants us to be like that priest was and many other, all saints. This is God's wish. This gift is prepared for us. But we have to do our part. This part which church teaches us, gospel teaches us, church teaches us, what we see in the life of saints. Let's start this journey in spiritual life by saying yes to God's calling with whole heart, with all consequences, when we made salvation of our soul as a priority of our life. Let's start to be the heroes who fight. We don't stand in own heart any movement of passion or bad thought or activity. Let's fight with that. We will not remove that immediately, but maybe in years. But if we don't try, we are not fighting, we will not remove any, any time. And slowly, God will start to fill our heart with this precious gift. Those twelve apostles, they changed the whole world. How many times the world will be changed if we all make decisions? to start this journey towards this fullness of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let's not expect sudden, immediate change. Let's not expect that, well, in some kind of miracle, God will transform us without our effort. I try to walk on this path to salvation. And on this path, there is awaiting this gift of Holy Spirit. 
Let's have courage to start this journey. Amen. Let us also with our soul, with our mind, let us say... Uh, <coughs> Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you here and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray you here and have mercy. Again, we pray for Holy Father Francis Poporomin, for Most Reverend Metropolitan William, for God loving Bishop Milan, for those who serve and have served in His Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Again, we pray for the people who are present who have your great abundant mercy for those who show us mercy and follow Christians of the true faith. For you are merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop Milan, the Interpreter, the Economic Monastic Order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the ever memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever.
For the precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Grant this your mercy, your only begotten Son, with me, are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Peace be to all. Oh, let us love one another, that with one mind we may profess. The doors, the doors and wisdom, let us be attentive. Let us stand right, last any all, let us be attentive to all for the holy name for I'm peace. <coughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ <coughs> and the love of God and Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Oh, let us lift up our hearts. Oh, let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and just to sing to the place you praise you to thank you to worship you place or dominion for your God. Ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, ever the same, you and your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non existence into being again, raised us up when we had fallen, left nothing undone, until you brought us to heaven and give us your kingdom to come.
this we thank you, your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit, for all that we know that we do not know, for the manifest and benefits bestowed on us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though the same be for thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six winged, many eyes, throwing out down their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn of We also cry out with these blessed powers, loving kindness, and say, Holy Aaron, all holy you and your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit. Holy Aaron, all holy, magnificent is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf on the night he was betrayed. Or rather, when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure and make hands, gave thanks, and blessed sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Likewise, he took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Amen. Remember, therefore, this same command and was come to pass in our behalf, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, the third day, the ascension to heaven, the sin to right hand, the second coming in glory. Offer you your own from your own, always and everywhere. Praise you, we bless you. Praise you, we bless you. Moreover, we offer to you this spiritual and unbloody sacrifice, and we implore, pray, and treat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts lying before us. And make this bread the precious body of Christ, and that which is in this shell is the precious body of Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Therefore, those who partake of them, they may bring about the spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of your Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom and confidence in you, not a judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer the spiritual sacrifice for those who part in faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for the spirit brought to perfection in faith. In special from most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, Dr. Tokos and the Virgin Mary.
sophisticated rhetoric fails to praise you worthily, and every mind spins when it considers how you gave birth. Therefore we with one voice glorify you. I'm on the first Lord, remember Holy Father Francis Papa Romar, most reverend Metropolitan William. Our God, loving Bishop Milan, preserve them for all churches in peace, safety, honor, health, many years as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And grant that with one voice, one heart, we may glorify and praise you most honor and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. May the mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts of the consecrated God who loves us all, may receive this holy heaven mystical treasure of most spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us and return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Ask him for unity in the faith and communion of the Holy Spirit. Let us come to ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation dare call you Father, God of heaven and Son. God and is the kingdom and power and glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Peace be to all. Bow your heads to the Lord. Through the grace, the mercy, and loving kindness of the begotten Son, with me are blessed together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive, holy gifts to holy people. Sice Jesus Christos, nejká plnost Svetého Ducha. Amen. I believe you.
Approach with fear of God and with faith.
Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance. Blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and forever.
Arise, now that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly life, creating all some mysteries of Christ, let us worthily thank the Lord. <coughs> For you are our sanctification, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us go forth in peace. Now let us pray to the Lord. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of house, glorify them return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, of priests, our government, and to all your people. For all generous given of our perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light. And we give glory, thanks, and worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and ever and forever. The blessing of the Lord be upon you, through His grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and uh, forever. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ God, our hope. Glory to you. Christ our true God, who for our salvation sent down the all Holy Spirit from heaven and in tongues of fire, upon his holy disciples and apostles, have mercy on us and save us. Through the prayers of his most pure mother, of the Holy Father, John Christ, much Bishop Constantinople, our Holy Father, Nicholas, the patron of this church, and through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Glory to Jesus Christ. Thank you for beautiful liturgy. Thank